sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek. Why, hello, welcome back to Increase Your Nerdiness. It is the second episode, also known as Episode 1. Because being good programmers, we started from Episode 0, and then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, which is going to be a lot, a little bit out of sync now, because I just got this letter in the mail. Actually, it was email. And it's from Apple. Dear podcast owner, your podcast has been approved and you should expect to see it in iTunes within the next few hours. Yay! So uh, if you want to subscribe to that, if you're an iTunes user and you think you might be interested, just go click on that now. Because I think to remain in the iTunes store, although it's not for sale, it's a free podcast, but that's where you would find it, I think a couple people at least have to be listening. So yeah, go there and do it. I don't really beg for subscribers on YouTube, but in this case, I'm going to make an exception. Speaking of YouTube, where you can find the video version of this podcast, all this stuff is kind of linked together at DerekForPresident.com, so that's all you have to remember. You don't have to, re okay, his username here, nah, don't do that, just go to DerekForPresident.com. Uh, but from a YouTube viewer, I got this feedback, and I, I love comments and stuff. There, it's just fun. It's like a, it's like a mailbag. So I'm gonna say today on we're recording on January 12, 2011. Who knows how this will change in the distant future? So at some point I'll be like, don't do this. <laughs> but for now I'm saying a good place to leave a comment or a message is to just go to the latest Increase Your Nerdiness video and leave a comment there, because I like to read through those. Anyhow, the comment is, <laughs> skip halfway if you want to skip the rant. Now, I actually checked this out, and if you watch episode zero, the first one, it literally, it's, it, it, it's halfway that I get done ranting and actually move into the content. That was actually a very astute observation. How did I manage that? Now, I will defend myself a little and say that the rant is kind of an introduction to the podcast because I, I sort of have to introduce myself for the first time in episode zero, and I wanted to sort of lay the groundwork as to what they could expect from the podcast. So, yeah, and then it, it did turn into a rant. Another comment from some dude with a lot of letters in his name. Lol. Red Snow, he noticed. When I was doing screen capture, he noticed that there was, uh, I had a Red Snow folder for gel breaking uh, Apple devices and stuff. So extra credit for noticing that. Good job. All right. Well, speaking of laying some groundwork and, and such, I, I want to expand on something we talked about last week. And I was talking about copying streams from your file without having to re render. Just taking the information and putting it in another place. And there are special cases where you can do that. But I, th I think I should talk a little bit more about the mechanics of how one of the video files on your computer or one of the ones you're watching now on the internet or listening to on the podcast, so many places, uh, how that all works. So here's the deal. We have these things called containers. And they can be kind of picky. You, you have to meet the specs. Whoever made the container makes the rules, apparently. Examples of some containers are MP3s. You kids have heard theirs, right? AVI files, of course. Now, MPEG-2 is kind of an odd bird. It can live in, oddly enough, an MPG file. Or transport streams are another one I've, I've used. M2T, MP2, VOBs on your DVDs. What are all these acronyms? Ah, it's it's craziness. But they can. I've actually worked with all of those file types, and so some. Oh, and and the other ones I'll mention before I talk about the standardization committees: MOVs, MP4s, MKVs, and probably a whole bunch more. When I run out of stuff to say, I just say and more. Ever notice how people do that? Anyhow, a, some kind of commission decides what you can put in their container. Now, th this stuff just, it kind of gets 
I would say unnecessarily complex, but it's kind of precise technical things, so I, I, I won't put too much blame on them. But if, if you ever want to have your head explode with excruciating detail, just Google for MP4 and read the Wikipedia article. Here's an excerpt from it. This is great. The ITU-TH.264 standard and the ISO slash IEC MPEG-4 standard, formerly ISO slash IEC 14496-10 or MPEG-4 part 10 advanced video coding are jointly maintained so they have identical technical content. Wow, how many people understood that sentence? I don't know. Like I said, it goes into crazy detail what you can put in these things. But that's the point. Somebody decides what you can put inside of this container. Now, inside of the container, of course, you have the goodies, the stuff you actually want to watch and hear. And so you have these things called streams. So you have a bunch of light captured by a sensor on your camera, eventually turned into a stream of binary ones and zeros, on or off. It's, it's just a very definite amount, so it can be reproduced accurately. Same thing with the audio. There's, there are sound waves coming in. The transducer in the microphone changes it into an electrical impulse. Eventually, it makes its way to your computer, and it changes it into a stream of bits. Now, I'll get to this in future shows, but basically that's... Well, in most cases, this is done with a codec. That would be a fun topic for next week, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, a codec is... That's kind of what it does. It takes a bunch of data and crunches it down into the final ones and zeros. So, that's what you have in your container. Eventually, you have an audio stream and a video stream. Now, there can actually be multiple streams at times. Uh, multiple video streams would only be for multi-angle DVDs. You wouldn't find that that often. Or, I'll tell you the one place you would is in 3D movies. You actually would have two different streams living in this file. That would be one use. Multiple audio streams you'll find on DVD commentaries, for example. It's all one file, but it has different streams. Now, one way to crack open your files and find this stuff out is with a wonderful program called Media Info for the fine folks at SourceForge. And once you install Media Info on your PC, I'm not sure whatever what other platforms it works on, but you can right-click, and in the dialog, this thing will come up where it says um, Media Info, oddly enough. And you click on that, and you'll get the Media Info. And it'll tell you what, what type of video stream it is, what the bit rate, the resolution, all that fun stuff, the codec, and the same for an audio stream. So that's one really cool way to uh, figure this stuff out. So that's kind of the point. There's a container, and the streams can live within it. Interesting thing. Different codecs, different kinds of streams can live within these files. For example, AVI files, which I believe stands for Audio Video Interleaving, something like that. That's where it just gets your streams in there, and then you can pull them back out when you want to read them back. Well, a lot of people think, I converted it to an AVI. Everyone can hear it or see it. Not necessarily the case because there are these things called those codecs I was telling you about, and there's a whole bunch of different types. I have a list here of some of the codecs I have installed on my computer, so an AVI file could have any one of these. Kind of confusing. and it, it, It's a wide range of things. Not everyone realizes the wide range of things that can fit inside of containers. Now, speaking of wide things... Some containers can be very restrictive and narrow, or at least kind of picky. MPEG-4, I'll talk a little bit about this one. It has these things called profiles and, and levels. Now, XVID, or um, which is sort of, well, there's a big thing where it came from DivX, and then there was like a DivX with a smiley face computer thing. There was something that went on a long time ago, but when it was all said and done, when the dust settled, we have something called XVID, which is an MPEG-4 flavored thing, 
And if you look in this drop down menu here, you'll see these different profiles. And you have a profile at some level which defines the type of stuff you can put in it. Interesting thing about this is at some future date, the the standards commissions, these these dudes like the motion picture experts group, which is where we get MPEG from, at some point they might include new stuff that you can put in it. New profiles. I, I believe there's a whole bunch of them at the time, yes. Um, my reading indicates the standard defines 17 sets of capabilities, abilities, abilities, which are referred to as profiles, profiles, targeting specific classes of applications. So not even all MP4s are created equal. Crazy stuff. And, and this is where it gets really confusing. Let's say you want to buy a camera and it's like, this is MPEG-4 compatible. The the flip camera, for example, will say, oh, it's an MP4. Well, here's the problem. It An MP4 could be XFID. It could be AVC, this advanced video coding, which is where H.264 lives. Crazy stuff, but uh, you don't necessarily have to know what it means, but you're probably watching me in AVC uh, right now. But at some point, they could invent some super-duper... Not just advanced video coding, but super advanced video coding or whatever they want to call it. And they could have a new profile. Right now, there are about 17. There are 17 profiles. They could invent it later. And so you could say, oh, MP4, it'll work. But now your computer doesn't have this stuff to play back that future thing. So this is why a lot of times your friend says, what, it's an AVI. It, play, it plays fine on my machine. And then you get it and it doesn't work. That's where a lot of this confusion comes from. So hopefully I've, I've helped you a little bit to at least understand the wide variety of things that, that, can, uh, that can go into this, why it can be confusing. Now, I believe it or not, I didn't go into as much detail as I could have because, again, it's like head-exploding technicalities, uh, crazy stuff. But here's what we have. We have our wrapper, which is our container, and inside we have our streams, which often are um, created with some sort of codec, which would be a fun thing to discuss next week, and I think we will. Anyhow, I'm Derek W. Truesdale. You can, as always, find this stuff at DerekForPresident.com. That's D-E-R-E-K. Don't add any extra letters to that. Spell out the whole word F-O-R. And then you'll have DerekForPresident.com. We have a podcast, YouTube versions, and all kinds of craziness ensues. Or, or I should say, and more. So make sure you uh, check that stuff out. Subscribe on iTunes if you're into that kind of thing. And see you next time on Increase Your Nerdiness. Sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek.